Well, welcome back to Smart Life. It's good to have you. I am Dr. Tina, your host, and it is always good to be with you. As we are watching the news, many of us are just flabbergasted as we see Christians in Iraq being exterminated by radical Muslim terrorists. And Ryan Morrow is in disbelief at the lack of assistance being given by the U.S. and other Western countries. And he joins me here today. Ryan Morrow, welcome back to Smart Life. Good to have you. Hey, thanks for having me back. Absolutely. Now, you know, it, it, this whole thing is mind-boggling because we're hearing so little about this. We're hearing so much about Ferguson, Missouri, my old stomping grounds. It's actually my husband's old Senate district part of it. Um, so we're very familiar with that, but it seems like, you know, massive amounts of people being slaughtered. If we are really not a bunch of racists in this country, I don't understand why this isn't getting more play. Do you? Right. And I think part of this is because it isn't news to hear about Christians being killed anymore. Uh, when you hear about bombings and persecutions of innocents, particularly Christians in the Middle East, we've been hearing about that for so long that to the media, well, that's not a new development, and so it's not worth covering. Uh, but morally, it absolutely is. And so you get all of this coverage about how you have 40,000, at one point was the estimate, Yazidis in Iraq that were up on a mountain without food or water, about to be exterminated. Uh, but in, compare that to the fact that you've had far much more uh, Christians being slaughtered, being forced out of their homes in Iraq, hundreds of thousands, and you see a, a distinction that, that is very troubling. So let's, let's get down to brass tacks. What has actually taken place? We've seen all of us. You can't avoid it if you're watching a Twitter stream. Uh, we've seen the beheadings happening. Um, we've seen the uh, Christian children in Iraq killed. Um, you mentioned the Yazidis, which I have the hardest time saying ever, um, that are literally throwing themselves off of cliffs, committing mass suicides after they've been raped, uh, the children being raped and tortured as well. Um, what don't we know is happening and about how many people are now involved in what really is undeniably a Holocaust, if you don't disagree? I don't uh, disagree. Now, there's really two things happening. Uh, on the one hand, I think that there is a lot of coverage of the Islamic State's uh, terrorist group's progress in Iraq and Syria. They just took over a very important air base in Syria, so now they control one-third of Syria, one-third of Iraq. They claim that they took back the dam uh, that was captured in Mosul today. Um, so uh, the Islamic State overseas is receiving more attention than some of the issues here at home. And the reason I say that is because there was a radical Muslim that was— uh, possibly connected to an al-Qaeda branch in Somalia that killed four people in Seattle and in New Jersey uh, in recent months and was arrested. And he recently came out and said, basically, it was a jihad against American foreign policy. That is a terrorist attack. You had four Americans killed in a terrorist attack on American soil, and virtually no one knows about it. That is interesting. And, and, and what exactly is the president doing about any of this? Because I'm not seeing him taking a real strong stand on any of this. He's made some sort of offhanded comments between golf games. But, but what really do you think is going on with the president and with the Pentagon in this regard? Well, certainly I think that the Obama administration deserves to be criticized for uh, failing to jump on top of this problem earlier. Because the Iraqis were saying, look, the Islamic State is coming in, taking over territory. We need your help. Just set, sell us the weapons, maybe give us drone support so that we can fight this. And we didn't do that. Now, more recently, the reason for President Obama's hesitation wasn't just about politics. It was because the Iraqi prime minister was in a political crisis, and we didn't want that political crisis to go away because we all, everyone agreed that he had to go. Now that the Iraqi prime minister has resigned, now is the time for action. It's time for a broad strategy. And unbelievably, the news just came out that President Obama authorized surveillance flights over Syria. Now, this group has been around for years. You mean to tell me that it took until now for us to just send planes over to see where they're at in Syria? What do you think happens between uh, now and really the 2016 elections, which is the first opportunity for Americans to make a major policy change, if you will. I don't think Obama is going to change his policy on these terrorists. I think it's going to get worse and worse. We have them coming over our borders, um, assuredly, at this point, uh, creating cells, growing cells here in the United States, making patent threats on Twitter and other places. 
uh, against American citizens. Now Chicago apparently is a target. We already knew New York was, probably places in California too. W what can citizens do between now and 2016 to try and engage in, in, in what is this really big mess when I don't think this president is going to change much? Well, what I think is really important is to counter uh, the conventional wisdom among the pol political elite that Americans just don't want to be involved overseas, even if it threatens us, because I think that's what causes political paralysis on both sides. Um, I do think that you're going to see President Obama authorize airstrikes uh, in Syria in addition to Iraq. I think that you're going to see that effort really ramping up uh, because it has to. Uh, no president wants to deal with an, an attack on his soil. Um, and that's exactly what's going to happen if we don't start really beating down the Islamic State. And we're already seeing a disturbing trends on American soil, because by my count, seven Americans have been arrested this year alone as they plan to make their way to Iraq and Syria to join ISIS's forces. So we know Americans are already planning on trying to go and link up with this terrorist group. And that's a trend that's going to continue. This is interesting as you as you look down the road, I would say six months ago, I thought a very libertarian leaning candidate might be in the cards for conservatives. As conservatives are watching this whole thing go on and our foreign policy situation getting worse and worse really under this administration, do you think it takes away from the viability of the more libertarian leaning uh, candidates uh, for the conservative nomination? I'm just curious. I think so. I think that uh, it does present a problem for more libertarian-leaning candidates, and, th and that's because uh, they tend to be more isolationist. They don't want to get involved overseas, and they'll say, well, the Islamic State is still an Iraqi problem. They don't like us, but they're focused overseas. And so there's going to have to be a fusion between the harsh realities of the world and the libertarian tendencies that are increasing within the Republican Party. Um, I'm not a, an expert on the Republican Party. I'm a political independent. But you can tell just by reading the polls, for example, that over 60 percent of Americans support airstrikes in Iraq against the Islamic State. So it's a falsehood, the idea that Americans are unwilling to get involved overseas when there's a situation that threatens us. And it absolutely does threaten us. Uh, what are you hearing on the on the domestic front in terms of real threats. I mean, I know we heard this Chicago threat. I saw a little conversation back and forth on Twitter and Facebook as to whether it was legitimate or if it was somehow planted by the elite in D.C. Uh, what's your thought on all of that? Oh, I'm, I'm convinced that there are supporters of the Islamic State in the United States, um, and especially uh, with the increased attention that the Islamic State has been receiving, their numbers are going to grow in the United States. Uh, this is one of the big problems we face, is that the Islamic State has momentum. And right now, they're competing with al-Qaeda, and they're winning over the next generation. So a good example of that is the British rapper that's believed to have beheaded uh, the American reporter recently. He's a member of the Islamic State. His father was a member of al-Qaeda, and that's the generational shift that's happening, where the younger generation um, is gravitating more towards the Islamic State because they look at the two groups and they say, well, the Islamic State is winning, and therefore I believe that Allah is blessing them. When the, it looks like the Islamic State is winning to many Muslims around the world, that is viewed as Allah's blessing. Well, Ryan Morrow, we thank you for being with us. You can find him on Twitter at Ryan Morrow.